Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about the studio interface, let's actually see it in action. Uh, in this particular demonstration, what I, what I want to focus on is just the, the speed uh, or how quick it is to get to uh, a working service across different channels. And in this particular demo, we'll show it working across the voice channel as well as across a, a messaging channel. And in this case, we'll use um, WhatsApp as the demonstration. So COVID-19 is obviously a very uh, common topic uh, right now, and a lot of people are needing to provide answers to their constituents, particularly if you're, say, a government agency. Uh, and you need to be able to update those answers in very quick fashion, essentially, you know, maybe several times per day. And so this was built as a demonstrator for those agencies, and it was showing what was possible in only three hours of development inside of the studio interface. So what we're looking at here is the result of those three hours, this representation here is referred to as the canvas. These boxes on the screen are referred to as nodes, and they represent different underlying technologies that are built into the Studio platform. On the left-hand side, you can see the node palette, and I can break this out, uh, or, or expand it, I should say, into various uh, categories. And so if we wanted to add something, for example, like tone analysis, we could just come and drop that in on the canvas, and now we would be using tone analysis within our flow. Now, the purpose of this application is to allow uh, constituents to call in and in a natural language manner, allow them to ask questions of a set of frequently asked questions and then have those answers looked up in real time and read back out to them over the phone or over any other sort of channel. So you can see here, if we scroll down a bit, there's a, a node here, which is ask a question. This is essentially streaming audio. In this case, we're using a Google speech to text node. So it's using Google for the real time transcription. And then it is taking the output of that and passing it over to uh, Dialogflow, also a Google product, to actually do the, the semantic analysis and determine what the intent is. It then comes back to the Studio application and goes through this logic here to retrieve an answer, and the answer is available from a local database. So everything can actually be managed within here in the Studio portal. Now, you don't actually need a phone number to interact with this. We can actually use the integrated WebRTC tester here in the top right. So let's actually uh, give it a call and see how it sounds. This service is for demonstration purposes only. It allows you to ask questions about the recent coronavirus outbreak known as COVID-19. It uses public information from the World Health Organization website. This call is recorded for quality and training purposes. Ask me a question. Can I catch the coronavirus from my cat? No, there is no evidence that companion animals or pets such as cats and dogs have been infected or could spread the virus that causes COVID-19. As I am still in the learning phase, can you tell me if this answered your question? Yes, it did. Thanks. Ask me a question. Is it okay to open parcels from China? The likelihood of an infected person contaminating commercial goods is low and the risk of catching the virus that causes COVID-19 from a package that has been moved, traveled, and exposed to different conditions and temperature is also low. As I am still in the learning phase, can you tell me if this answered your question? Yes, it did. Thanks. Ask me a question. So I'll just hang up there, but you can get the idea that I could just say things in a natural manner and it would actually uh, work out kind of what I was after, and then would look it up in a database of answers and read the answer back to me. If you're wondering kind of how uh, that actually works, if I look into this table lookup node here, you can see it's actually doing a query where it's looking for where the frequently asked question answer is equal to the intent that was returned from that dialog flow element earlier. So if I go to global and go up to data stores, and just scroll down, we can actually look at the actual FAQ database. And here you can see the FAQ title and then the FAQ answer. Uh, and then you can also provide different language variants if you wanted to as well. So if I needed to modify an answer at any point, I could literally just go in here and type whatever I needed, click the little tick button and it would be live uh, on the platform. So a very easy way to update information uh, on the fly. Now, the next thing I want to show is how can you use this uh, sort of backend that you've built in terms of this database of FAQs, as well as this uh, natural language uh, processing element in the form of Dialogflow, 
and how can you expand that over to different channels. So what I'm going to do now is go up to the task menu and switch from voice tasks over to messaging tasks. Now, in the messaging tasks, we're going to actually be using WhatsApp as an example messaging transport system, but this could be SMS, uh, it could be other, other services as well. Uh, and the thing that I want to focus on here is the multilingual aspect uh, that was then extended from the particular task. The important thing here is the same NLP is being used and the same backend is being used in terms of that database of answers. Okay, so, so to show this in action, I'm actually loading up the web version of WhatsApp. So this would typically appear on your phone, uh, but for the purposes of this demo, it's easier to do it here inside the Chrome browser. And I'm going to start interacting um, with the system, just like I would uh, in a chat style environment. Okay, so I've got a particular uh, number here, and you can see here it says, hi, I'm Coronabot, I can answer questions about the recent coronavirus known as COVID-19. Uh, ask me another question. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the, a question, uh, can I catch the coronavirus uh, from my dog? But I'm actually going to ask it in, in Spanish. Okay. And we'll see what happens here. So essentially, uh, it's come back with a Spanish response. And this is using Google Translate just as part of the actual task flow uh, that we uh, would have defined in Studio. So if I actually want to see the response, if you don't uh, read Spanish, let's actually take a look at this response. And you can see here, here, no, there's no evidence that pets or pets such as cats and dogs have been infected or able to spread the virus. This is just Google Translate um, detecting the language and switching it for us. Similarly, if I wanted to ask a different question, uh, maybe I want to say, hey, can I catch the coronavirus from a doorknob? Uh, but I wanted to ask that in, say, uh, Japanese. Uh, let's do that. And here's the response in Japanese. And again, if you don't speak Japanese, let's see what Google says it says. I don't know how long the virus responsible for COVID-19 persists on the surface, but it appears to work like any other coronavirus and so on. So what we're actually able to provide here in a very short amount of time is essentially a frequently asked question that's operating over, over voice, it's operating over text, it's operating in multiple languages, uh, and it's running off a local database. In this case, the database is in English, so we can simply just update our answers in English and they will automatically be translated uh, during the actual um, usage of the service. And finally, the thing I want to stress here is just how quickly this was developed. This entire system, including the NLP backend, including the database of frequently asked questions, including all the flows, was done in only a few hours. The voice side was done in about three hours and then a few hours more for the text side of things. Thank <laughs> you.